Hello, y'all. Welcome to Harp's Court. I'm your host, Derek Harper. And man, you're not going to believe the guy that I have as my guest this afternoon. I am honored, excited, all of the above, because this guy was a member of the Fab Five. I mean, 91, probably one of the greatest, and I'm not exaggerating when I see, say greatest, classes of college hoops of all time. Jimmy King, man, how are you? The, the originator as far as Kings are concerned. How you doing, brother? Thanks for joining me. <laughs> my man, D Harp, how you doing? Thanks for having me, my brother. Yes, sir. It's been a long time. I appreciate you having me yes, on. Yes, sir, man. And it's amazing that I'm sitting here in Plano. I don't know where you are. I know you're from this area. But everything for you, man. <laughs> I'm right now in the street. Right down the I'm street for me. Too. Okay. Everything for you, Jimmy, started <laughs> right here, right at Plano East High School sensational high school you had a mm -hmm. great career in high school but from there man you ventured off to the midwest and you went to the mm -hmm. university of michigan in 91 i think it was 91 if i'm not if my memory yeah. serves me right you ventured off to to mm -hmm. the big 10 to play at the university of michigan with some fabulous guys man i i, I just want you to share with me my the viewers what in the hell? What what kind of experience was that, man? Because you guys are, no, <laughs> it, it's incredible. You guys are superhuman guys when it comes to college basketball. Well, uh, thank you for that, for that love. Yeah. And uh, but you know, for us, it was just, it was really heaven sent. We didn't we didn't really plan it. It was something that kind of formulated, just came together. But um, when it came together. Juwan Howard, who's, you know, the, the, the head coach of the University yep. of Michigan currently, wow. was really the spearhead of recruiting. So it was really a precursor to what he does now. He recruited <laughs> us because he was the first to sign. <laughs> and he was relentless. Like, he, I remember coming home from playing a week, coming home from practice, and he would be on the phone, um, you know, as he finished practice. Uh, walking home through the cold of Chicago. So, um, you know, he was very re relentless. Some days I would skip, uh, you know, his phone call because I was like, man, I don't want to talk to him today. Like, I'm just trying to get home and, and chill and eat or something. Right. And, 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 but he was that guy. So um, Juwan was really the catalyst. I signed second. Ray Jackson, who's out of Austin, Texas, signed third. Um, Jalen. And Chris Jalen Rose and Chris Weber uh, signed fourth and fifth, both out of Detroit. Right, and that's the reason why um, uh, Chris wore number five or number four, and Jalen wore number five because Chris signed four and oh, Jalen wow. signed. That is great. That is great information. Great insight. Carry on. This is your show, brother. I, <laughs> I, I want to hear more when, when it comes to all of, all of that, well, King. But. It, so, you know, a lot of people think that the names, the names carry a class like that. I mean, you guys are famous for so much, man. The baggy shorts, the black socks, the black shoes. I mean, all of that played. You hated Duke, you know, and I know hate is strong. I don't mean it in a vicious way, but there was there was, a, there, there was something about Duke that you guys didn't didn't care for. But I think a lot of people think Chris Webber when they think Michigan and the Fab Five. They think mm -hmm. Juwan Howard, of course, because he did the WAP. Remember the uh, mm -hmm. the, the dance yeah, the that he did? Patch. Yeah, 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 the cabbage patch. Beg your pardon, <laughs> the cabbage patch. That's exactly right. Yeah, the, the, whole, wop, the WAP would have been cooler though, but he, yeah, he did yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, in any <laughs> event, people think that when when you say Fab Five. Ray Jackson, I know what Ray is. He's a coach now. So, of course, he loves the game. Um, Jawan, you talked about yourself. I think people automatically just kind of cater to Chris Weber and Jawan Howard, the best two uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the five guys. Mm -hmm. What do you think, man, brought you guys together other than the recruiting from Jawan Howard? Because – to be a powerhouse in college basketball for as long as you guys were there, it had to be some little nuggets that really allowed you guys to flourish as a team. 
I, th- I think it was really the the desire that we all had. We wanted to mm-hmm. be the best. We wanted to win a championship. We wanted to represent our families and our abilities. Uh, we knew that we were good individually. That's how we got to the University of Michigan. That's how <laughs> we qualified for the University of Michigan. Yes. Because as you can see now, you got people that's in the transfer portal right now that jump to Michigan but have to jump back out because they don't qualify. <laughs> and see that's another right. side of <laughs> that's Absolutely. another side of of you know of of the student athlete. We were more than athletes. We were students too. So um that I think is was was over, was overlooked because we were students of the game. So that when we got together, we wanted to make sure that we could we were able to fit our pieces together to make one whole, you mm-hmm. know, we weren't five individuals and that's why we, we, we thought, you know, especially, you know, how the game was played back then hard, you know, it was inside out. Yes, sir. And, and we, you know, you know, we, it was, it was, it was a lot of intimidation. It was a lot of physicalness. It was a lot of banging. So of course you look to Chris and you look to Juwan um, as anchors in the middle. Mm-hmm. And they could play off each other, and Ray uh, and Jalen and myself can just kind of float around a perimeter, slash yeah. and cut, spot get up in where you guys to. fit in. Get it, get in where we fit in. And yeah. so, uh, you know, we were kind of playing positionless basketball uh, as it is today back then, and I think that was our advantage. If you could compare five guys now in the past in the NBA or in college basketball, is there anything or anybody that you would compare the Fab Five to? Um, I know we wanted to be, well, I say it's a mix of a few teams. Mm-hmm. A, one, Phi Slamma Jamma for yeah, Houston. just the Houston, 83, Hakeem Olajuwon. Yeah, five, that's my class, Drexler. yes, sir. You know, there has no doubt. Michael and Young. Remember, um, Michael Young. Yeah, I remember that team. Absolutely. Ray, the and, great and, Ray Guy was the coach there, right? That's right. Yeah. Yep, Ray, Ray Guy. Lewis. Yep. Was it Ray Guy? Yeah, it was Ray Guy. It was Guy. Guy. Yeah, yeah. And and and, um, and then um, uh, the uh, uh, Georgetown teams, the uh, John Thompson-led teams mm-hmm. with Patrick Ewing, um uh and and uh Michael Jackson and 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 Reggie and those guys so uh and then it was and then it was the UNLV um, yes Greg um, Anthony Larry Johnson Greg Anthony Hunt, Ant- Stacey Anderson Augman, Hunt, Augman <laughs> um Scurry those yes, guys sir. yes sir yes sir Hart. so so and, and 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 so those were the 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 kind of the the influences that we had in college basketball um, it wasn't necessarily pro, although we did have pro guys that we liked, like Isaiah, Magic, yeah, you know, Bird, you, um, thank you, <laughs> you know, Aguirre, you know, what I'm saying like y'all, y'all were my our guys, so yeah, um, you know, you know, we we wanted to build off of the things that we watched you guys do. And 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 we wanted to, you know, kind of build a stepping stone and keep the trajectory going in that in that way that we felt was the right way to play the game. Man, what what you know, when, when, when you're different and, and clearly the Fab Five was different. Right. I mean, you changed the culture. Like I talked about the, the, the black socks, the black shoes, the baggy, the baggy gear, uniforms and things of that nature. Of course, that puts you on a. Uh, under a lot of scrutiny, if you would, mm-hmm. from the mm-hmm. national base. And I remember mm-hmm. it like it was yesterday. I mean, I remember when Chris called the timeout and you didn't have mm-hmm. a timeout and all of those different things. If you would, mm-hmm. just a little, King, elaborate, man, on some of the things away from basketball that you were forced to deal with. Oh, that's that's a great one, Harp. Like, you know, there were so many other things. Just, for example... Um, in the documentary, the, uh, uh, documentary, we, 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 ESPN, uh, 30 for 30, we discussed. Yeah, I saw it. Watched the letters, every second the letters. Of it. like we got, okay. So there were alumni from the university of Michigan 
And, you know, mm-hmm. back then, it was the technology. We didn't have, you know, you couldn't, the word we tablets. We couldn't do this. Well, you <laughs> yeah, we couldn't do this. So everything was handwritten. You know, yeah. everything was, you know, was was digi- uh, uh, analog. So uh, it was professors, uh, business CEOs, business owners, mm-hmm. um, CEOs, prominent people, um, politicians, all types of people. All different types of uh, people who are supposed to be uh, pillars in the community sending nasty letters talking about Mm -hmm. they didn't want to see five niggas on the court. Mm -hmm. And they're from the University of Michigan, proudly signing alum their year and everything. So those are the things that I think were made to work. Pierce is my heart, man. Pierce is my heart. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we're kids too, you know, we're kids. Yeah. So, you know, we, we internalize that and use that to forge a relationship with all the other players too, not just the black players, but even the white players. Like we're a part of this together and we're going to, if we're going to, you know, do this, then we need you guys on board. And if you got our backs, we got your back. Um, and, and, and I, that's why I really applaud Steve Fisher because Steve yes. endured a lot of those things that I don't think if we were anywhere else, it wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have done that. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to do what we did. Talk about Fisher. I mean, he had a tough job in himself. I mean, you, you just talked about what you talked about and he was the head, he was the head of the snake. He was the guy. <laughs> That you guys depend on for 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 leadership and for direction and guidance as a head coach. I'm sure your relationship today is as strong as it was when you decided to leave Plano West or Plano East. I'm sorry, that that, that might start trouble. (laughs) But I'm sure the decision you made had a lot to do with him. Talk about him as a man and a guy that that led that Fab Five team. Absolutely. And this is this is I could sum it up for you just like this heart. And, you know, you've been through it. You know, the game, you know how it is when you're being recruited. You're a top guard in the country. You know what it is. Yes, sir. So everywhere I've been, everywhere I've been, you know, there, there, there may or may not have been a bag. When Michigan came, gotcha. when Michigan came, they didn't promise me anything. They promised me right. a good education. And they promised me that I would become, uh, uh, you know, someone that uh, that would be viable within in the community. And that was what se- separated Steve Fisher's approach versus everyone else off top. Number one was integrity, because mm-hmm. as far as, you know, like we know in this game of life, if you if you can't shake someone's integrity or if your integrity precedes you, then. You know, that's 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 more than an, an, enough than uh, than most uh, have mm-hmm. when they before they, you know, even are, are able to walk into a room or uh, or or have a conversation. So that stuck out to me uh, more than anything. And what also stuck out to me is the way that he approached. He, he never he always approached me as a young man, not a boy, not mm. a child, you know, not a kid. Mm. He he treated Very me important. he treated me like a man. And 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 every time he addressed me, he addressed me by my name or by uh uh or he called me a man. <laughs> you know, he addressed me as it a man. It sounds like nothing Jimmy King, it sounds like nothing other than respect. Definitely. And 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 on top of that was the way that they taught us the game. They taught us the game, um, the way they held us accountable for uh, going to class. Um, there was no, you know, nobody taking your notes. There was no skipping school. <laughs> No, it yes, was it yes, was yes. it was a it was a regiment. You had to be there. Yeah. You had to be accountable. It was a, you had to be accountable. You had to do your work, and uh, and if you didn't, there were repercussions. Like there was there was no favoritisms. Yeah. So so that to me is what set the tone 
And uh, we learned from that and we were able to internalize that as well and grow and, and use that as our, you know, kind of foundation. Yeah. I, I think automatically people think, King, that your best player is the leader of your team. Out of that five guys, I know Ray a little bit. Mm-hmm. I know he was hard nosed. I know he defended. Mm-hmm a bunch of positions. Mm-hmm. I know he had that dog mentality as a player, just like you, just like the whole Fab Five family had. But if mm-hmm. you had to pick one guy, one Pacific guy, right, who would you consider the leader on that five, the Fab Five uh, squad in 91 when you guys were freshmen at the University of Michigan? If I had to pick one guy... Ooh, that's, you? that's a tough one. Because you, you have leadership that's quality. That's a tough one. It's tough <laughs> because we were all yeah. leaders in our own right. Like, I was mm. a quiet leader on the court, but in the huddle, I was mm-hmm. the one doing the talking. So, like, if you ever see us huddle. Yeah. In the hotels. Right. And, 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 and you see my head when, doing when, like when this. When you're having the dinners. Oh, yeah, on, when, the dinners. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's different kind of leaders, man. They're different kind of leaders. Correct, correct. But Jalen was probably the most outspoken, the most demonstrative. Chris was the most physical. Juwan was the most probably stood out because of his work ethic and hard nose toughness. Me because of my athletic mm-hmm. ability, <laughs> and and mm-hmm. Ray because of his defensive uh, hustle, uh, utility type mentality and skill. So we, although we were all of those things. The things that we needed each other to do and we decided to do when we were in those back rooms, in those hotels, discussing how we're going to make this work. We decided that's your role. This is what I need from you. Every night I need that. I need to get this from you. And if you if for whatever reason we don't get it, we can supplement. But this is what we have to have. And and, and that's how mm. we started, you know, um, knowing that all of us can play all the roles. And that was the uniqueness of mm-hmm. us. We could, we could all play the point. <laughs> we could all bring up the ball. We could all, you know, stand in the corner and be the, the, the spot of shooter. We could all post up on the block. We could all slash mm. through the lane. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of times we actually limited ourselves just because we were so far ahead, it was just like, we can't do all these things, even though we could, right. you know, even though we could, right. but, uh, it was just the yeah. way the game was. And, and, uh, but, but I do know, I do, I do feel like if, if we came through this era, it'd be, it, it'd be something else. Like, it, because the way that we talk about the way that we talk <laughs> about it now um, I think it would. <laughs> That's where yeah, I was going next. Been like, like tenfold. Yeah. Hmm. So you 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 just feel like you came up short. I mean, let let let's face that too. weren't able to get over the hump, uh, as they say, and win win that national championship. Yeah. What what's the one thing when you look back at that journey uh, together as five guys? Because of course, people lives. When you're in college, your ambition is clearly to be an NBA basketball player. Mm-hmm. I've heard Chris Weber say that before. I've heard Jalen mm-hmm. echo the same sentiments as well as uh, yourself, everybody. Everybody's goal is to get back or uh, get to the mm-hmm. NBA, get to that next mm-hmm. level and, and, and last for a long time. What's the one thing you think that kept you from being crowned champions in college basketball? They should have gave me the ball. <laughs> they should have gave me the that's ball. That's what I wanted like, to hear. Right there. You, you know, what, you see me as a young punk. Y'all raised me. Yes, I did. Y'all raised me. <laughs> yes, I've been sir. playing with y'all since I was a, a baby. King, that's what I, I wanted to hear, baby. Like, you know, you know, Hart. They should have gave me the ball. That's what I wanted to hear, King. <laughs> <laughs> It's incredible, man. I I just followed that that era, man. It it was, Uh, it gave me goosebumps, man. I'm telling you, when you did, when you Mm -hmm. fell short, I I, I really felt Mm -hmm. some type of Mm -hmm. way. You know what I mean? I was Mm -hmm. really rooting 
for the mm-hmm. uniqueness of the Wolverines. Mm-hmm. And I went right. to the University no of Illinois, no so no I'm, I'm, I'm telling on myself right, right now because, like, yeah, you know, there's yeah. a love-hate relationship right. to the Big Ten. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. No, but uh, on the real, man, I, honestly, I, I commend you guys, man, on changing the culture of, of basketball from – just black and white to being yourself, being authentic and, and going for it. You know what I mean? And I mean, how you guys that young, you talked about being, being kids at the time, how you guys handled that. I think you guys will hold on to for the rest of your life. So I'm going to, I'm going to move on from that. You can, you can comment on that, but it had to be difficult. All I, all I have to say really is coming up short. Oh, well, all I have to say is that, you know, the one thing is, 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 is this, you know, we, we, we all also came from strong black families with mothers and fathers. Yeah, man. And, 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 and if mothers and fathers were home, we had grandmothers, we had aunts, uncles, we had people in the neighborhood, we had the community support. And so that is kind of the mentality that we had coming in is that we have to carry that type of commitment and support and unity on so that that's really what uh our mantra or you know what really hurt us as far as not really getting to the pinnacle because we wanted to show everybody we you could do this your way um and be unapologetic about it love me or hate me um you know you still can't stop me (laughs) so that's that's that was that was the deal that was our deal (laughs) <laughs> let me Jalen obviously a very so, I mean I, I think a lot of times Jalen is the best in the business when it comes to uh, commentary mm-hmm. uh, as an NBA commentary mm-hmm. working with ESPN Chris Weber, Weber beg your pardon worked with TNT mm-hmm. for a long time equally as good Jawan mm-hmm. Howard went on to, to be successful as a, a great player all-star teams mm-hmm. went on to be successful as a head coach. Does any of that surprise oh, no. you when you think about their personalities when they were 16, 17 nope. years old? It, 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 and you hit it right on the head. They're doing exactly what we joked about. Jalen talks so much. Right. Oh, wow. he, he has a perfect job for him. He loved to talk about. Yeah, He's all day talking. long is all he did. He would get newspapers. He would read. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey. He did it all. Soccer, everything. Jalen was that guy. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Juwan, we used to, in our freshman year, uh, before we even barely got on campus, we used to joke about how disciplined Juwan was. This is Juwan was my roommate. We would get up at 6.30 in mm-hmm. the morning. He would iron his pants Crease down the middle every day. <laughs> now we, you know how it is, Hart. I remember we walking those through, we walking through four yes, feet of snow, ice sliding on ice. Yes, sir. The hawk is out. With, right, with, with Timberland. He got on. creases in his pants every <laughs> single day. That's that's and and so we would always call him, you know, the mature one out the bunch, and. uh yeah, so yeah. he he had the characteristics of that, and and Chris as well. Chris is very charismatic. Chris is so talented. Yeah. Um, Chris can sing. Chris can rap. Chris had albums out. I don't know if people even remember that, and they were very good. He had some very <laughs> yeah. good albums. He got some cameos with Corrupt and Dog Pounding on them. He he's 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 highly intelligent. He's very talented. So I'm not I'm not surprised. Absolutely. All of you guys, though, I, I would say all of you guys are, are highly intelligent. And as far as Chris is concerned, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's the only one out of that Fab Five that's in the Hall of Fame right now. And if you don't believe how intelligent this guy is, just go and Google his retirement speech. Mm-hmm. I don't know no, if you've absolutely. heard it or you've watched it or not. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it was absolutely mm-hmm. amazing. You know, like. When things mm-hmm. give you goosebumps, right, mm-hmm. you're feeling it. And I felt yeah. his uh, retirement speech, man, a Hall yeah. of Fame speech, beg your pardon, to my core. All of us at the Dub Network would like to thank the crew at Herman Marshall Whiskey for sponsoring another episode of Harp's Court. 
Herman Marshall Small Batch Whiskey is handcrafted and award-winning. And whether it be their Texas bourbon, Texas rye, Texas single malt, or their blended bourbon whiskey, all are built from the grain up, just like good whiskey should be. And make sure you check out their amazing tasting room in Wiley, Texas, if you get a chance. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. It's a great place to pop on in, enjoy one of their specialty drinks or two, or for hosting special occasions like birthday parties, mixers, weddings, or receptions. Thank you so much, Herman Marshall. I'm so happy you came on. I want to uh, commend you once again. I want to move, man, shift gears a little bit. Uh, and, and talk about the stage of the NBA right now. Um, surely the talent, there's no question about it. There's a lot of talent in this league. Uh, wh what kind of hands do you think the league is in as we come towards the uh, NBA Finals for 2003? So as far as where um, uh, I see the NBA is, you know, you got older players, for instance, in LeBron and Steph Curry, who may be transitioning out. Um, you know, I still think we have uh, formidable players. You, you know, Giannis is still, you know, young. Uh, you look at, you know, the Jason Tatum and um, uh, Jalen Brown, uh, you know, still young players who I think will be representing the league. And as a host, you know, you got to look at uh, Fox's Sacramento, uh, look at the, Ooh, yeah. you know, it's a host of young, talented uh, uh, players across the league that, you know, me being a fan, it's, it's good to, you know, step away from the game. When you're playing the game, you're not necessarily a fan because you're involved with the right. minutia of it. But when you retire, you step away, you become a fan again. So for me, I enjoy uh the attrition. I enjoy the 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 drama and all of that behind it. Uh, the storylines, uh, uh, you know, the culture, uh, where everybody comes from. Because, like you talked before, Harp, you know, we come from multi mu multicultural backgrounds. We know multicultural people. Absolutely. So, um, Absolutely. In the NBA and the workplace, I love seeing that. And I love seeing the representation of the sport that we love across the country. So I think it's in a great place. I think it's it's time for oh, we, we're, we're, we're coming to a, a time where it's going to be a transition and, uh, the, and some new stars, some up and coming stars. So I'm excited to see who absolutely who, who that's going to be. You know, I, you, you, you make interesting points. I, I completely concur with you that the league is definitely in a good place, will always be. And I, I you know, the late David Stern, I think, deserves a lot of credit mm -hmm. because he implemented the 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 foreigners and the mm -hmm. overseas mm -hmm. part of, of everything right now. And if you look around, you have so many different players mm -hmm. that didn't grow up in the United States that came from you know, France and Nigeria mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of these different places, mm -hmm. Slovenia. Look at, look at, uh, look you at, name it. Yeah, look at Luca, you know, right here in Dallas. Luca, like. exactly. And I think that is what has, I wouldn't say saved the NBA, mm -hmm. and you can tell me how you feel, but that's what's really put the NBA in a position to be successful, I think. For years and years to come, I think uh, Adam Silver is a a players commissioner and does a fantastic job of hearing the voices of the players. Mm -hmm. And I, I I'm with you on it, man. Let, let, let's talk about Ja real quick mm -hmm. and his situation. I mean, people have beaten it, you know, beaten it down, of course. And we were all young once. Mm -hmm. What if you could give Ja? A paragraph. <laughs> what would the paragraph be? The paragraph would be real sweet and simple. Ja. <laughs> ja, you're in a position to change generations, your family's trajectory for generations. I would take a step back, forget or remember 
all the hard work and sacrifice you took for you to get to that point and understand that something as insignificant or as minor as waving a gun, even though it's not illegal, mm. can cost you your livelihood. And so, although it may not be fair, you have to understand that you are on a different microscope and with great powers and, and, and the things that you are, are, are uh, the platforms that you're allowed to uh, to to be up on is a is is something that you you know you should cherish. You should you should be able to you know for instance, Jim Brown, um, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Muhammad Ali. Those Jim Brown, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest, rest in peace. And that's why I'm bringing them up because yeah, RIP. Because to me. I don't mm. see I don't see those guys doing those things. And if he's the guy that I believe him to be, that I see his, you know, for obviously I think he is to get to this point. Um I think that he just needs to, to just to just to take a step back um and 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 check his surroundings and check the things that he's doing. It's, it's, it's like you said, we were young and dumb. Like we did some, I look back Absolutely. at the things that I, I did where I, I thought I wasn't doing anything. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, I was just telling this to Amen. my boys the other day, you, we did some things we shouldn't be here today. <laughs> Amen. So, um, so I don't want to come hard, down hard on him, but right. You know, I, I just hope that he gets this message, which, I believe he will. And and just take a step back. Stay off social media, number one. That's what I would do. I would stay off yeah, social media. Yeah. And, I don't and, believe in it. it means Other I, than doing I, my podcast. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's the world we're in. So we we have to Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. You know, but um, yeah, I would take a step back and 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 just kind of organically start to get back to the things that surround what I'm known for, which is basketball. Mm -hmm. And well all, that, the, all that other stuff, yo, put that, go, go underground if you absolutely have to do it. And make sure that, you know, there are no cameras. <laughs> right. I, I, I mean, you, you said it really well because there are, you talked about Jim Brown, you talked about Muhammad Ali, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I think those guys, they, they paved the way. I mean, really paved the way for us to be free to make the salaries that some of right. these guys have. I mean, somebody had to stand in the gap to make what's going on salary wise possible. Yeah. And it was Jim Brown and it was Bill Russell and it yeah. was Muhammad Ali and it was Kareem. Mm -hmm. And I want to commend those guys. No I doubt. mean, right here, right now, no doubt. on what they did. And I think the, the, the least that this generation of players who are fantastic mm -hmm. players. I mean, mm -hmm. well, you can't argue the talent level no in the NBA right, NBA right now, because I think we have some of the greatest mm -hmm. basketball you want to see. Mm -hmm. um, the playoffs. We got, a, we got are on their way. We got an A seed in Miami, and we're looking. We got an A. Like, I was, you know, everybody. You got there, Like, what's wrong with Miami? Yes. They're the A seed. <laughs> yes, yes. They're not, nobody they've already had a chance to knock season. off my, Milwaukee, and look where they're at. Right, did that. So, with that being said, you played right into where I want to go. Who do you expect? Do you expect Boston? to make history or do you expect Miami to make some this, noise now, and, this and get to the fight? Hard. This was hard for me because yeah. my, my heart is with Miami because Juwan, yeah, yeah. you know, yes. Spolstra, I played for coach Riley. Riley, I, Riley's my yeah, guy. I have tough. And I have, yeah. and I have, I have a regret and I don't ever, I, you know what? This is the first time I'm going to share this. I've never shared this before heart. That's what we need, baby. <laughs> That's I what we need. I regret not signing with Miami when I was down there 
and they know what I'm talking about in 98. I was down there. Yeah. They came into the locker room. They gave me a contract, and I was like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold out, see what the mm. other offers I get. And I got other offers, but then the lockout happened. And it, yes, I remember. In the lock, and it messed up everything. Yeah, and I, 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 I should have took that contract. And that's, that's, that's you know the why? regret that I have. And, and 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 you know why I think you should have because you are a Pat Riley type it, guy. It, you are hard nosed, hard working human being. Yeah. yeah, that was the perfect place for me. It was set up yes. perfectly for me. And that's and I say that now because I watched Jimmy Butler and that crew, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. that that's yeah. it right there. But um, yeah, that um. Yeah, my my heart is with Miami. And I really do hate to say this. And I because I, I I don't <laughs> believe it, but I think it's a possibility that Boston might be the first in history to pull this off. Don't say it. I don't know it. it. I hate it. Don't I really, say that, it, man. I really hate it. I do. I, I do, getting, do you realize Jimmy? You talk about chills. <laughs> I'm getting chills right now saying that. Because I, yeah. I don't want, I actually don't want them to, but <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> it's tough. And I'm listening to Spo, and I'm listening to Jimmy, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. mm, I understand, but we will see. We'll see. Yeah, Sport we'll definitely players, see. I, I, obviously, you know, they play yeah. better at home, and I think that of course. You know, Miami's going to shoot better, and I, I think they will play better defense, but overall, I think Boston is just, they have more talent. You know, they, well, I, 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 I'm going to be real with you, man. I love New York. Played two and a half, three years in New York. But here's the ticker. Here, here's the deal. When I was in New York, I played for Pat Riley, mm-hmm. who was president of operations, who was running the Miami mm-hmm. Heat. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you, as hard as it was to be in New York playing under a guy like Riles, who doesn't cut any corners whatsoever, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. You 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 either in or you out. It's mm-hmm. you. It's us against the world. Mm-hmm. I would never root against a guy like Pat Riley because I know how much he puts into that's right being successful. That's right. Sleepless and that's nights. Why, and I don't. You are, you are right, heart. That's you are you are <laughs> yeah. absolutely right. You are a thousand percent right. Thank yeah. you for getting my rhyme right. I'm going with Miami. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. I'm going heat all the way. I'm I grew up in West Palm that's Beach. Right, that's why I trust your. You right. You are yeah. right. Yeah, I that's grew right. up you in West Palm. Against, yeah, I'm not going against Pat Riley. I'm not going against Spo. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Boston. I'm sorry, yeah. but you guys have won enough championships. Yeah. <laughs> that are no, and all I the also want to see them as an AFC get it get there. And yeah, I yeah, want to see yeah, how, that, that, and I want to see them match up against Denver. Like I want to see how because yeah. again, it's the same situation. They, you know, they don't really match up well with them, but um, I want to see that. I want to see how they yeah. scheme that. Yeah, I'm going to get you out of, uh, on this one. So obviously, we know that Denver is coming out of the Western Conference, and um, I just what are you? What's your thoughts, Jimmy, on load management? Because that's a new thing. It's a hot topic in the NBA as far as uh, guys not playing every single night. What What are your thoughts on that? Okay, now. I, I was just talking to my pops about this the other day. I, it's hard okay. for me to imagine wanting to sit out. Like, I, I want to play yeah. all the time. I, you know how? Well, even if we're hurt, we want to play. You got to, you got to make us not. Play. Yeah, I played hurt a lot. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I played I, hurt. I, I yeah. watched you hard. I know you play hurt. Yeah. I, I, no, I know. <laughs> yeah. And 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 so to yeah. me, it just. A lot of guys did. Right. And it was cultural, too. And also, like today, and that's why, like, today I feel, it makes me feel like the guys don't really love the game like much. Like, they could either be like, oh, I'm good. Like, I'll just sit on the side and, you know, cheer mm-hmm. and, 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 and you know, and wear my fashion gear. And, and <laughs> that's, 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 that's it. But, but as far as getting out there and laying it out for your brother – and being there, you know, thick and thin, 
Nah, that that's it's just different to me. Is and to me that also has a different mentality of when mm-hmm. I'm playing. Like I like I'm you know if I'm going out like I'm about to dive through this back post and you chilling on the wing and you ain't really you know giving it like I don't, mm-hmm. it's going it's some problems it's yeah. going to be some problems yeah. along the way. Bottom line, bottom line for me, man, if you can play. You play. And I, I'll give you a quick story on why. And this was late in my career mm-hmm. that I would never, if I was able to play, not play. Mm-hmm. So I'm in Orlando. Chuck mm-hmm. Daly is the coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's there? Penny Hardaway is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ronnie Sykley, Gerald Wilkins. Um, j- just that that year. This was two, uh, 1999, moving towards 2000. Mm-hmm. 98, 99. Mm-hmm. When I played in Orlando, mm-hmm. I was in the starting lineup. I, I, I was a starter. Mm-hmm. Mark Price was my backup at the time on the coach daily. Mm-hmm. And I got hurt. I, I got a knee. Cont- I got a knee in my in my knee mm-hmm. or in my, my quad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that injury, that's mm-hmm. a very difficult injury to come come back from. Mm-hmm. And it took me a long time. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. while I was hurt. Mark Price st- uh, stepped in for me, and we were both at the latter part of our careers. Mm-hmm. I know I was. Mm-hmm. I, I can't speak for Mark, who was one of my favorite guys mm-hmm. that I played against. Um, Mark took over the duties mm-hmm. uh, as point guard on that team, right? We won eight straight games mm-hmm. while I was out. Mm-hmm. And you know the rest of the story. Mm-hmm. I never got my job back mm-hmm. because I don't care how good you are, how successful mm-hmm. you've been especially when you're dealing with a veteran coach yeah. and the late great Chuck Daly, mm-hmm. uh, Detroit two-time mm-hmm. champion. When you're dealing with those kind of coaches, they're going to go with what's working now. Mm-hmm. You know, the league doesn't wait on you. Mm-hmm. When you're out, you know, guys sit out. Uh, Jay Crowder, for example, love Jay. That's my mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. But I think he did himself a disservice when he didn't play for Phoenix, for Phoenix yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah. For the Suns, right. Mm-hmm. He, he he wanted out of there. And I would advise any young player in this league, man, play. play. Because it's a short business. Yeah. But if you can play, go don't play. Don't opportunity. make up your mind one day out of – You don't you get don't. that opportunity. And it's touch. only 400 and, – man, that's, that's 450. 450 players. players. <laughs> in the whole NBA. In the whole league. Yeah, so I, you, I, and I want to touch everybody. Yes, sir. Like, that's just your competitiveness. Yeah. And – just Absolutely. From the, the, like the goal of actually just being there, you know, uh, you know, I, my career was short lived. And every yeah. day when I was out there, I was like, yo, this is a dream. <laughs> like, they, yeah. like I would have ball like they 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 listen. And, and if you know, like, especially when I was in Toronto, I was like, yo, yeah, yeah. Practice is my game. I'm game. With, like, yeah. It's game yeah, you time. Yeah. I mean, especially being young, because I remember being the same way. When I was a rookie, Mm -hmm. I used practice Mm -hmm. as my game. (laughs) And whoever, Brad Davis is one of my – that's my guy. I love Brad. But he was going to get it. That's right. I was coming for it when I was was a rookie because I wanted to be on the floor. I was 11th pick in the draft, and I thought I should have been on the floor. You know what I mean? So I was laying it out. No doubt. And our our first team in 83-84 for the Dallas Mavericks – let me get this out out the way. Our second team mm-hmm. beat our first team all, all the, time. the time. I do, and I hope Mark Aguirre sees this, and I know I'll hear from him because he totally dis- disagree. He and Ro both. We do a segment though, Jimmy. Uh, fact or fiction mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Harps Court. Mm-hmm. Question is fact or fiction? The old school, the the eighties and the nineties, better. Better league now or in the 80s or the 90s? What, what's your take? Wait, better league as far as? Game, players, uh, talent, uh, all of it. Fiction. <laughs> Not a fact. You think the guys now are better? No, no, no. The, the, guys, the guys back then are better. Oh, facts. Yeah, yeah. facts. That's that's yeah. a fact. What, what what made the league better then, in your opinion? Well, I I believe, well, f- f- in my opinion, what made the league better was, I think, it was more 
detail into the intricacy of of, of like the 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 game, um, uh, the breakdown of the game and how the game is played, um, the nuances mm-hmm. of the game, um, uh, the style was was definitely different, and I think the players inside out. We talked about that. Yeah, and I think the players were different because we want to say that the players today are athletic. I think they're, I think they may be slightly more athletic and maybe bigger because of the regimen. Mm-hmm. They eat better. They start younger. Mm-hmm. You know, it was mm-hmm. a little different era, but as far as skill level, I don't think it compares. I think the the players in the eighties, nineties skill level is much higher. For instance, oh, and, and and basketball <laughs> IQ. For instance, I watch these guys today, and I watch them dribble around and get to the basket to kick it for a three. That drives me insane, Harp. I'm like, yo, unless you need that three <laughs> for the end of the quarter, yeah. the time to go up, whatever. Take the layup. Yeah, the lay- that shot will be there later. You could just kill them with layups. Yeah, and and so and and so like there are certain other parts of the game that I'm like, you know, in the '80s and '90s it just wouldn't fly. You'd be sitting on the bench, you know, coming down, just you know, shooting threes. Everybody is possessions where there's five straight threes. Nobody's really trying to force the issue to get to the basket. That's the difference in yeah. the game. The game was like you had to execute. And every even though there was no uh, sexy offenses, everybody ran the same place. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's not sexy now either. Right. It's not sexy now either. It's just try to make it it's like pick and roll now. Right. But, no, no, it's pick and roll now. It's 85% pick and roll. Correct. Well, you uh, in the down, NBA all right it now. Is. So, yeah. But but I, I threes that's over twos. More skill. That's that's the difference to me. Yeah. So you are magic over LeBron guy. Oh, for sure. I'm a magic over. Le- okay. I'm Ma- sorry, Michael I'm Jordan. Too. Magic too. I, I'm magic too. too. Magic. Le- yeah. I don't. I, and I, I I appreciate LeBron. I appreciate everything LeBron does, especially mm-hmm. off the court. But if I was starting my team. LeBron and I got Preach. ten picks. LeBron is not even in my top ten. <laughs> Who is your top five, King? I got Magic, Jordan, uh, Wilt. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got one hundred and fifty rebounds in a game. Come on, man. we'll have 50, <laughs> 30, 20, 20, and ten. Like, I mean, See, we live in an era. I, we live in an era now, though, of numbers. And like I said earlier, I'm dangerous. not totally against numbers. That it's that dangerous. it makes sense in a lot of situations. It really does, and it can be but dangerous. When you, yeah, and it can be dangerous. No, no, no doubt about it. There, because you got to have a little apprehension the about it. with with the with the issue they're trying to have, like LeBron leapfrogging. Like, when did he become better than Kobe? Right. <laughs> and, and and then and then okay. That's another podcast. Okay, right. And then and then okay, if MJ is the GOAT and Kareem still had the, the, the scoring title, how does LeBron become the GOAT just from getting the scoring title? Right. I, so that's what that's and I I don't want to disrespect LeBron. Well, no, because not I, that I like and that's why I don't No, and I know you're not. I know this because LeBron yeah. is the best or one of the best in this era by far. Him, yeah. um, uh, Giannis, and uh, and Steph, to me, are in a class. And, and, and Kawhi, when Kawhi is is healthy, healthy, and playing, yeah. yeah, you know they're they're in a the class. Jokic might be in there if he win, you know, but but whatever. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I you 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 you're a lot younger than I am, and I don't. You didn't play against Michael Jordan no, like I, I played, played against Mike. Michael Jordan. Oh, I know you did, but I'm saying I played he against was him. In his, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we had a lot. I mean, I was in New York. I was mm-hmm. in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you mm-hmm. there is no way in hell that Michael Jordan is not – I'm not even talking about LeBron, Jimmy. Right. 
I'm talking about Michael Jordan. Right. <laughs> and when, when I tell you that when you got ready to with F with Mike, right. you had to tie your damn right. shoes up tight right. as hell. Right. Because Mike, mm-hmm. Mike, Mike didn't play. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's mm-hmm. around here about this and about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. We can stop that nonsense because Michael Jordan is the freaking goat. If there's a goat, you know, I don't believe in all of that that, that right. goat shit. I mean, yeah, every, yeah, yeah. people, he doesn't even call himself the goat. Correct. Okay, and, yeah, and he doesn't say that shit. Do, and that's a problem. But that's but yeah. that's your game yeah. speaks for you. Know how it is, hard. You ain't got to go nowhere. Is, ain't nobody got to ever say yo. Shit. You don't ever have to tell <laughs> nobody about your game. <laughs> right, right. Everybody I mean, see, you can, they know your game. Shit. Man, Michael Jordan would would pull your heart right. out of your chest. Right. You understand? Yep. Yep. And just the way he went about his business, man, mm-hmm. Michael was second to none. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He is not second right. when it comes to being the GOAT. Man, I'm not going to keep you any more longer. I appreciate um, it, Harp. <laughs> you'll never know. I appreciate you'll it, never know, We can talk about this all day. <laughs> all day long. Uh, we'll do it again sometime. Sure, we'll, please, we'll get on. Please. Hopefully, bring your guys, man. If you can get Jalen and Chris and all those guys no to join us LA on Harvest Court. A couple weeks ago, we when they uh yeah. when they come down, I, we'll be uh, sure. Yeah, catch up for sure. I have Jalen and I can share a few laughs when he first got in the league. <laughs> I had to put him in check a little bit yeah, as yeah. a player, but uh, <laughs> much love, man. Continued success to you. I love. And it. thank you for the memories, man. I greatly appreciate you. I'll It'll be in touch very soon. Anytime, Harper. I appreciate it. All right, Harp Scored, y'all. Check it out. Mm-hmm.